Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Protocus Mystery. This will be part 392. We're continuing with our lesson titled Reality Transit. This will be part 11. We want to take a look at the changes that are going to take place at the time of the beginning of sorrows particularly at the time that the Lord speaks, <clears throat> utters the judgment from His throne in the New Jerusalem on Mount Sinai. Because at that point, everything that's initially changing now is going to speed up, manifest, what today is a tenuous feeling of a change at that point is going to be an uncontested reality spoken into existence by the utterance of the Lord's judgment. Scripture indicates all current reality will change when the Lord utters his judgment upon the earth and its inhabitants. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. <clears throat> Therefore prophecy thou against them all these words and say unto them the Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation he shall mightily roar upon his habitation he shall give a shout as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth so what's being said here is the Lord is going to speak into existence changes that are going to come about affecting everything in everybody. It will affect the creation. It will affect those that are upon it. <clears throat> Scripture indicates his voice will affect all from the secondary creation to the spirits of those <coughs> born again saints to the spirits of the descendants of the twelve tribes of Israel to the spirits of the unsaved human race. Now we want to take a look at some other prophets to talk about things that are going to take place as a result of his roaring from Jerusalem. Joel 3, 16. Joel 3, 16. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Same thing that Jeremiah is speaking about. Same judgment. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. So when he speaks, the whole creation is going to be affected. He goes on to say, but, but, so he's going to talk, he's talking here about the effect of what he's saying is not going to be the same as what is affecting the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth are going to go into convulsions. They're going to go into upheaval. But the Lord shall be the hope of his people. Who is that he's referring to? The church. Prototokos, yes. born again saints mm. that are committed. And the strength of the children of Israel. 
talking about the literal descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. Why? Because they're both going to be gathered. They will know. They will know. I can't repeat this enough. They will know when they hear the Lord's voice. We read that scripture some time back. Zephaniah talks about it. Other prophets talk about it. When he utters his voice, everybody that's living in harmony with him will feel <coughs> comforted, strengthened, and hopeful while everything else is going into convulsions. This is a small point. We need to understand that. Yes. Sorry, this is a small point. I'm just thinking about the diaspora of the 12 tribes. You said all the descendants. Yes. That would be multitudinous, huge in number. Yes. What percentage of the diaspora <coughs> recognizes the situation that they actually return of the entire diaspora? Now they don't, but then they will. Okay. It's going to touch the spirit. Okay. 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 And that's the beginning of the, the training that they get by white Israel. National Israel. Right is going to, for the first time, begin to understand its true identity. Hmm. We're going to look at some other prophecies that give us a clarification of that. He's waking up their spirits. This Mr. Is Jones, let me, let me throw something in here. Yeah. Now we know, as born-again saints, through the scripture, that it says it was once delivered to the saints. They didn't hang on to it, mm. okay? What about these that are in Jerusalem? Did they, were they once given the... No. They weren't, no, no they didn't. No, no. So... The idea is the Lord is going to start from ground zero. We're living in a pseudo reality. When he speaks, first time, True reality is going to touch his true people. Yes. What I keep thinking about is the refusal to accept what's going on by the by the early the early greats. That's, but at this gathering, are they going to be quickened? And that's Mrs. Smith. That's gone. That nothing to do with them. We're talking about the prototokos, our brothers, those that are committed. We're talking about everything that's been true. It's been hidden that now the Lord is going to, through his utterance, bring forth out of obscurity. Forget all those other things. They're going to judgment. Only those that are open to truth are, gonna, are going to move in sync with the voice of the Lord. Across the board. But since the... Uh, sorry. Okay. Just a quick one. Since... <coughs> The majority of people will not heed Jeremiah 25, 30 across the world. How can they know that this is a true reality? I'm going to repeat myself. Hmm. Go for a bit. I'm sorry. The people you're talking about are going into judgment. So it doesn't matter. Okay. He's speaking a judgment right, against right, them. Right, the people right. that are open to truth are going to feel comforted and strengthened for the first time free. Okay. The pseudo-reality is being broken. Truth is now going to be open to those that have been in bondage. Okay, yes. but it's happening to the same, the group of people is on earth. Some are being drawn, some are being frightened. They're both, they're both going through the same thing, different reactions. Is it going to change those that are going under judgment no, to want to... No, it's too no, late. no, 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 yeah. Remember what Zephaniah says. Turn to Zephaniah. Second chapter. That's <laughs> my favorite. Before the decree. Yes. <clears throat> we want to get this current situation. Forget what's going on now. The Lord is looking to that which has been hidden, that which is His, that which has always been open to truth. Zephaniah 2, verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought His judgment. 
Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. <clears throat> the only ones that are going to benefit totally from this are the committed. Yes. Hid. You and I were having a conversation. I was trying to trying to figure out that one word that's applied to those that are that are not going under the judgment. What were they going to? And then it's hid. Yes. yes. That's interesting. Yes. <clears throat> we're looking at those that are ready to enter into the Lord's presence. What you're looking at is a separation. Those that are holding on to a pseudo reality are going to go down with that reality. Right. So Those that are seeking God are for the first time going to be free to seek Him totally Amen. and openly. Yes. Yeah, I mean, totally committed, constantly working on your relationship with Jesus. Yes. This Being is for them. made vigilant, but very ready. Mm. The this whole is for thing them. is your, your life. It becomes the most important thing in your life. The only thing. Yes. This, is what, this is what we're preparing for now. This right. one time with the X, Y axis crosses, you hear his voice. Um, Hans Julian Spiegel over here hears his voice. He's been doing his thing all his life, could care less about the Lord. He is going to be in fear and trembling. God's people are going to be joyful. They're going to be confident. They're going to be strengthened. Same voice speaking to the spirit of those that are his, rejecting the spirit of those that aren't his. And are ready. Well, there's only one that's ready. Those that are his spirit. Mm -hmm. Those that are his. That's who he's coming for. But let's go on. We haven't even scratched the surface of where we want to go here. Principle. <coughs> Scripture indicates his word. Touching their spirits will prepare them for their return back to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Here we're talking about those who are the literal descendants of the tribes of Israel. Elohim will at this time take over Israel from YHVH. Right now, YHVH is running the show over there. But there's going to be a time when he's, the scriptures indicating strongly he's going to be being over his head. He's going to be limited because of the plan of Elohim. Elohim is going to take over the whole thing and proceed on pursuing the master plan of the ages. Elohim will at this time take over Israel from YHVH who appears not to know what direction to take concerning Israel. Turn to Hosea 11. We're going to read verses 7 to 11. This is all happening at the time of the Lord's roaring from Zion. Hosea 11, right after Daniel. Hosea 11, 7 to 11. This is YHVH, who is in a quandary at this time. Things have gone up to the wall here with what's going on in Israel, what's taking place. <clears throat> and my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. So you notice he's talking about himself and he's talking about Elohim. Mm -hmm. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? Ephraim? How shall I deliver... What are you cackling about? I'm cackling. <laughs> How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adama? 
How shall I set thee as the boim? These are individuals that came on a judgment in the past. Mine heart is turned within me. My re re repentings are kindled together. So he's in a quandary. He's basically trying to determine what he should do. He knows they're rejecting him, but he doesn't want to judge them. He wants them to come to him in the distresses that they're in encountering. They won't do it. He's right there, that close. <laughs> Notice, no Manasseh. Ephraim. That's why I'm tackling. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Verse 9. Praise the Lord. I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim. For I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee. And I will not enter into the city. So he refuses to put judgment on them. But the question that comes to mind is in Deuteronomy 32, 8 something, 9 something in that area. Mm -hmm. He is leading them back. So he has a plan. We're going to oh, get there. Sorry. I'm excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> Verse 10. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. What is he saying here? When he shall roar, like a lion, he's talking about Jeremiah 25. Mm -hmm. Then the children, he's talking about Israel, <coughs> shall tremble. The word tremble comes from the Hebrew term charad, which means Hasten with anxiety. Why from the West? <clears throat> oh, we're going to go on to that. Okay. <clears throat> the word West there. It's the sea. It's talking about the West Sea. Right. <clears throat> Continuing on. They shall tremble, hasten with anxiety, as a bird out of Egypt, and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses saith the Lord. He's talking about they're going to hear his voice and they're going to hasten from Egypt, Assyria, uh, the other regions in the Mideast back to Jerusalem, back to Israel. Those within short span, spans will be able to make the trip on their own because Elohim is taken over Notice what he says. And I will place them in their houses, say the Lord. This is talking about Elohim. It's taking over. He's drawing his people back to the land of promise. <coughs> Let's go on. I'm not seeing Manasseh here. Can you explain? Well, he's included. He talks about Israel. And if he's talking about his people, it means Manasseh's got a subservient role here. <laughs> he's from calling the shots. Okay. All right. <laughs> you asked for it. That's true. Let's go on. Uh, <clears throat> Scripture indicates his word touching their spirits will prepare them for their return back to the promised land. Halloween at this time will take over Israel from YHVH who appears not to know which direction to take concerning Israel. We read Hosea 11, 7 to 11. This gives us this picture. <clears throat> now, scripture indicates after uttering his judgment on the human race and the fall of the Adamic kingdoms, the Lord will return to gather his saints. So you have a phase progression here. The Lord speaks. Things are going to happen. One prophet will give you an understanding. Another prophet will build on an understanding. People are going to hear. They're going to be set in motion. Judgments are going to fall. Uh, nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. The collapse of this current Adamic order. All that's going to take place. You're going to have some of the descendants of the tribes of Israel won't be able to make it back. 
Why? Because the earth's going to crack like an eggshell. You won't be able to travel. Cities are going to be shells of, um, of a tomb-like uh, uh, edifices trapping people. The, the highways, Isaiah talks about highways are impassable. You can't have any freedom because the fourth empire is now taken over. You don't have any freedom because geologically the earth is split and there's no way uh, for an individual to get from point A to point B, naturally. <clears throat> That's when YHVH comes in. We said, after rendering his judgment, you're going to have a space of activities taking place on the earth leading to the collapse of the of the Adamic kingdoms and then after that the Lord will return to gather the remnants of those who could not physically return Ephesians the first chapter verse 9 to 10 Having been known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Now turn to Matthew 24. Just taking a quick perusal of events that are going to take place after the judgment call. <clears throat> Matthew 24, starting at verse 7. Read down to verse 10. This is those that are going to experience the judgment. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to the afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another <clears throat> and you have false prophets and you have all this activity taking place until turn to Luke 21 Starting in verse 25, down to verse 27. <clears throat> there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, man's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. This is when he comes to gather. This is Ephesians, the first chapter, 9 to 10. What's been going on? Turn back to Matthew 24. Two things. People are suffering and people are being freed. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 47. <clears throat> Who then 
is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. When does this start? At the time of the spoken judgment. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. What's been happening? From the time of the judgment, he has been feeding the sheep. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So you have a division here. People suffering egregiously. People trying to scrounge to survive. But the faithful and wise servant is given everything he needs and those that need to hear what he has to say are going to be sent to him. All this time between the time of the judgment call and the time that he comes back to gather is going to be a period of time. I don't know how long. Maybe a year, maybe less. Don't know. But this is what basically is going to happen in this Right after the judgment, everybody that's free is going to walk free to do what he's been called to do. The people that aren't ready, the people that have been having excuses, are going to be doing the suffering, scuffling, trying to survive as best they can, holding on, and then maybe being incorporated in hearing what the faithful and wise servant has to say. Mm -hmm. All this coalesces at the time of the Lord's return to gather the people. Now, when this happens, Scripture indicates, He will then dispatch YHVH to gather the remnant of the tribes of Israel from the now destroyed Adamic world. Turn to Deuteronomy 32, verse 10 to 12. who <coughs> YHVH found him who the remnant of the tribes of Israel in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness so unlike those who are <coughs> who have come back from the Middle East areas where it's easy to travel back to the promised land YHVH has to be sent out to literally take these people back supernaturally because the kingdom has fallen, the government has fallen, you don't have a country anymore, you don't have transportation, you don't have the ability to supply the needs of the individuals. They are there waiting to be delivered back to the land. Which YHVH says, and notice what it says. He found them in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her, on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He's going to lead his people out of the Luciferian-controlled world, back to the promised land. All the remnants of the 12 tribes. Now at that point, the Luciferian influence has been impacted mm -hmm. because these essentially are righteous people. And the intensity with which it used to impact these very people is now completely wiped away or just merely diminished? Well, it never really got hold. <coughs> Because the Fourth Empire is released shortly after the judgment is called. So these people are connected to Elohim for, okay. from the beginning. So yeah, they, they, they observe, they see the Fourth Empire gods, okay. but they're not affected by it because they've already seen their God. 
They led back to the land, they settled in the land. YHVH has given them, led them back to Mosaic society. Remember, these are people that are instructed, being instructed in the law, not in Christianity. Hmm. Why? Because their mindset is on the descendants of the tribes of Israel. That's how they identify. You got to identify as being of the tribe of uh, Asher or the tribe of Naphtali or the tribe of uh, Zebulon or Joseph. You're going to be mentally identified from right. your tribe <clears throat> because the national identity is no longer there. Right. Governments collapsed. Right. These people were never committed to the national identity. Never committed to the Lord. So, okay. But they are the literal descendants of the original Israelites. So they're going to be taken back to the land and given the blessings to develop and work out their destiny. Yes. You're talking about the people that are gathered. No. I'm talking about the people that are gathered back to Israel, Israel not the church. Okay. So the Adamic memory wipe. We, we bring this up because this is happening around this time. Mm -hmm. For them to have a tribalistic identity, they've evidently <coughs> forgotten their national. I mean, that's essentially what you're saying. Yes, right. yes, okay. yes. It's all in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Memory lodges in the spirit. The Lord's going to open up the memory, and they're going to understand. They're going to identify with something they didn't identify with before. I have to understand. This is not the reality. This sure. is not where you are now. Sure. All this, you're going to understand how pseudo this thing really is when it's gone. You're going to see it for, totally for what it was. A non-reality imposed upon people. <clears throat> and in that context, they're going to feel that, like for the first time, they're really they're walking in understanding of who they are. Right. Turn to Ezekiel 38, verse 12. We'll note what Ezekiel says <coughs> about the gathering. Ezekiel 38, verse 12. Here you're going to get the battle of Ezekiel that they're always looking forward to. They're trying to figure out when it's going to happen here. But what we want to focus on is the gathering. Verse 12. To take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations the people gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land so YHVH has brought them from where they were into the fullness and the richness of the land and now they are prospering but I want you to focus on where they've been gathered from from the nations. Now turn to Jeremiah 29 verse 18. We're closing with this. Jeremiah 29 verse 18. <coughs> And I will persecute them with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms, kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse and an astonishment and a an hissing and a reproach among all the nations whither I have driven them. So they're delivered to the kingdoms. They, they are redeemed out of the nations. What, what is the difference? 
all the kingdoms will have collapsed. There will be no kingdoms that they're going to be taken from. They're going to be taken from the nations, <coughs> tribal identity. Once the nation state concept collapses, man will revert back to tribalism. That's how he identifies himself. And that's what they're going to be delivered out of. So you have a time sequence here. The Lord pronounces judgment. The people that are the descendants of the 12 tribes remain there. They can't get out because everything's collapsed. They remain there until the Lord returns, gathers the prototokos, sends YHVH to their land and takes them back. So you're going to have two gatherings basically simultaneously. And then you're going to have the progression toward <coughs> the uh, establishment of uh, <coughs> preparation for the rapture. When you read Revelation, and it talks about these people claiming to be Jews. Mm -hmm. It's referring to the gathered Israelites that are in Israel. They're saying they're lying, they're not Jews, they're of the synagogue of Satan. So the, the communities, the gathered saints are going to know about what happened in Israel. Israel's going to know about what happened to in the saints. But you're looking at two different mindsets. One's coalescing around the Mosaic Society. The other is being prepared for advancement into eternity by you and you. Praise the Lord. 